What's going on guys? One love out to everybody. UFC Fight Night. Russian Stroke versus Sakai. Breakdown predictions. It's been a while guys. Been a while. I feel a little butterfly in my stomach. <laughs> this is a tough card to predict and break down. This ain't an easy one at all. Because there's a lot of question mark fights here. A lot of inactivity from some of the guys them. And a lot of the guys have, you know, been losing, so it's very difficult to make a prediction or breakdown. But I did the best I can, and like I told you, just don't go by what I say. You go do your own homework also. And I'm not promoting you guys to go and bet. I'm not telling you guys to go and bet your house, bet your cars. You do what you need to do, but you do your own homework. This is just my opinion. I'm just sharing some information with you, and you guys can take it and do whatever you want to do with it. Okay? Um, yeah, let's get this party started, man. 14 fights in this card. It's going to be in the small octagon, UFC Apex, so smaller octagon, right? So I guess for most wrestlers, it could be a little easier to close the distance, not much room to move around in. So that's a factor too to look at. I got my notes here like usual. I watch every single fight, took down notes. <sighs> let's get this party started, man. I'm going to be working off of the um, topology, sure dog. And also I got the MMA odds here to go and take a look on it afterwards, okay? Um, first fight here we got. Um, and also I may mispronounce some of these names, guys, okay? <laughs> first fight here is um, Claudio Pulis versus Jordan, Jordan Dirty Dancing Livet. <laughs> no... <laughs> that's no disrespect to Jordan actually he did a, a good dirty dancing pose man when he ran and just like bam and just hit that pose and held it he did that pretty damn good man I believe Patrick Swayze would be proud of him to be honest with you Patrick Swayze would would be proud of him if he was around right I mean his spirit is around so but he hit that he, he hit that nice on point so Jordan dirty dancing Nivet. That's going to be his fight name, <laughs> all right? Um, Claudio Pulis, like I mentioned from way back, I used to train with this kid here. You know, when he was, I think he was younger, like 15, 16 years old. We rolled together. Mostly, we did mostly um, a lot of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu on, on the mat, you know? So, um, I mean, he's a good kid, you know? Both of these kids are good, man, you know? Um, like I said, I'm not here to disrespect anybody. And I hear the disrespect and the fighters then. You know, once you put yourself in that cage, it's life and death situation. It's your health on the line. Your health is your wealth. So everybody that's fighting on this card, you mean, you know, they deserve to be there. You know, they put the work in, they put the the health on the line. So enough respect going on to all these guys. Okay? So I'm not here to disrespect and beat on any one of these fighters. But I'm gonna give my opinion. From off his skill set though, okay? So Claudio Pulis, I used to train with him a little bit, he used to roll around and stuff like that. Um, let me see the information I have. He's not active though. He, I think the last time he fought was 2019. I believe he has a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And his strength is going to be the ground game. You know, his strength is his strength is going to be the submission. You know, majority of his fights are by submission. Okay. Um, let me see. I believe he has, what, four, I think, or three or something like that. He has five by submission, okay? So he, the, the ground is where he's going to want to take this fight to. His stand-up is still in the works, okay? Like I said, I'm not going to beat on any of these guys. I mean, if you ain't there, man, you know, you deserve to be there. You understand? So, and it's not an easy sport. It's not an easy sport to get into. You know, these guys take a lot of damage, man. And, and yeah, as I said, that's your health. So... It is what it is, man. So, Claudio Pulis here fights southpaw stance. Um, as I said, the stand-up is still in the works, right? Um, both of these guys, though, they love the, the, um, the ground game. Like, Jordan Livet loves the ground game, too. I mean, that's his strong point also, right? Um, I believe Jordan has... Uh, Jordan has about the same. I think these guys are pretty much even, yeah. Like, five by submission. So, so these two guys are pretty much even, and yeah, I would say even on the ground. As far as the skill set is concerned, the stand-up is pretty similar. Um, Jordan has the same kind of stand-up. It's still in the works. You know, it's, it's, you know he's, he's still trying to figure it out, right? Um, 
Livet um, Strong Point is a, is a submission game, like I mentioned. Um, Jordan Livet, though, I feel like he's a little bit more craftier than Claudio Pulis, right? A little more craftier than Claudio, right? Um, let me see. He kind of reminds me of a Ryan Hall. That is like what Ryan Hall is, kind of like, as a fight starts, he just goes to the takedowns and then you lock up a submission quickly. He kind of reminds me of that. Um, both of these guys fight in a southpaw stance. And like I said, um, I feel Jordan Livert is a little more craftier. And uh, I believe Pulis, I said Pulis is a brown belt, but I think he could be a black belt. No, I'm not too sure about that, but I, I think so, okay? Um, also, with Jordan Lippet, one thing that's going to stand out in this fight for Jordan Lippet is going to be his, um, his wrestling. I believe he was a high school wrestler. So that's one thing that stands out the most. When it comes to Pulis, Pulis, he will go for takedown or something, he doesn't really get it. Where Jordan, Jordan will grind, 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 and then once he hits the ground, his scrambles are, or scrambles are good, man. His scrambles are pretty amazing. He, we, we move from one position to the other quickly and lock up a submission. So I feel like the more craftier, more technical, and the more active guy is going to be Jordan. If you look at Claudio's record here, or Claudio fights, he fought one time 219. One time 218, didn't fight 17, one time 16, one time 15. He's only fighting one time a year. I mean, that's that's not really active enough, right? Remember, the more you compete, the more you practice on a specific game or art form, it's the better you're going to get. That goes for anything, not just a combat sport of fighting. That goes for your drawing, painting, or whatever. If the more active you are, the more you put the work in, it's the better you're going to get. And I feel that well, Jordan Levet, he's just been friggin' active. He's been active from 2020. He fought, he fought four times in 2020. Four times, right? And, and he's like finishing his fights by submissions. Like very easily too. He's like, he's not even struggling. He's like, it makes it looks like it's like, uh, it's like a walk in a park. He's like, he's not, he's, he's not struggling to go for takedowns. He's not struggling to, to get the submissions like everything is coming easy to him so uh, again i'm not saying that claudia pulis ground game may not be better i mean it's possible anything is possible in the sport you know nothing is guaranteed i mean to all i know you know claudia could take him down or jordan could go for a takedown and he get and he gets sub submitted by a guillotine anything is possible guys but for this fight i like jordan levet and this is a confident play for me and i must say jordan dirty dancing levet by um i must say by submission guys all right next fight here we got yusuf zal versus sean woodson this is the next tricky one here um ugh, okay zalal here he switches stance um he could be the more well-rounded guy here bjj brown belt Light on the feet, um, on orthodox stance, but like I said, he would switch to southpaw. Um, he should have a full camp for this fight. His last fight there against, was it Song Wu Choi? I believe that was, I believe that was a short notice. I believe it was a short notice. I, I was a, I was a Tupora. I think it was Tupora, either Tupora or Wu Choi. I believe it was a short notice, but he should have a full um, camp for this fight here, all right. Um, but I feel that Woodson, though, is a more technical guy here. And the reason why I'm saying that, I feel Woodson boxing, okay, he's a boxer. I feel like his hands, his, his, his jab, his combination is a little more sharper than Zalal. Zalal moves around a lot, but he try to counter and pick his shot. I feel with Woodson, he throws more volume okay Zalal has a jab too but I feel Woodson throws more volume right and he was more kind of like a boxing he was kind of like have a shell deep defense and shell up and then you know go for uppercuts go for the hooks and kind of stay in the pocket and kind of box it out with you you know, he throws a lot more volume Zalal more will move around and pick his shot and counter which is fine too but I just feel like with Woodson he's he has better hands here um, like I said, he's more technical on the foot. Like I said, better boxer. I'm reading from my notes here, guys. Um, like I said, Woodson threw more volume. 
um, Zala looks for openings and try to counter. So it's kind of like a different kind of techniques from different guys here, right? Fight, the, the fight, um, like the fight game or the fight stance, um, the fighting art is a little different from both guys. Um, Woods in here, um, switches stance to come out here on orthodox, uses his left jab to set up that straight right in the pocket. Woods is going to have a four inch reach though. That's massive. He can have a four inch reach. And also at a 145 weight class, he's massive at 145. Massive at 145, man. So, um, I'm not sure if this guy is weighing already, but let me see something here. Okay, I think that was his last fight. He weighed not 149. Well, yeah, so he's going to be massive for this weight class. He got four inches of reach and a three inch of height. That's massive. And with that jab he has, the only thing, the only thing about this fight is that Zalal could go for takedowns. Like I said, Zalal could be the more well-rounded guy here because of BJJ Brown belt. And we saw Woodson can get taken down. Right? So that's one of those things that you're dealing with a smaller cage too okay um let's see here he uses southpaw stance to flow in with the left um while switching back to an orthodox right but he mostly fights an orthodox stance um he seems to fade as the fight goes along though like his last fight there was kind of fading out but then he's fighting um Ju Juicy J, Julian Arosa though, right? So Julian Arosa is, is a very experienced guy, man. You know, the guy been in UFC from way back. Um, he, he he got kicked out and came back. So it's, it's not like this guy. This guy been in Ultimate Fighter from way back, from two from 215, and then, you know, he, he left and came back. So, I mean, this is a very experienced guy that he fought. So losing to him, you know, is not really such a big thing, right? It just, it just experience. It's, it's actually going to make... Woodson a little better, right? He's gonna make his game better. Um, like I say, he seems to fade as the fight goes along, and um, his ground game is not his strength. But his takedowns, he will look for takedowns, and his defense is not too bad. But he can get taken down though. So his ground game, like I said, is not his, his big strength here. It's a tough one for me to actually pick, and um, I would actually be very careful with this one because. Smaller cage, is that come in there with just takedowns, wrestling, just push takedown, push, push takedowns. He could pull off a decision, but then Zalal could gas himself out. Or Wooten could defend against the takedowns. Right? And if Zalal gas out, we saw him when he fought Choi. If he gasses out, he's gonna get pieced up with that jab, right? Pieced up because Woodson have better hands in my opinion. So this is a kind of tough one for me to pick. I kinda of was back and forward, but I'm going to push a little bit more to Sean Woodson for the win here. And I must say Sean Woodson by decision, but I'm not confident, guys. And I would say be very careful with this one and Zalal could win. But I'm going to go with Sean Woodson, okay? Next fight here, we have Manan Rorot versus Tabitha Ritchie. This fight is a short notice for Ritchie, right? Um, BJJ Black Belt. Also has judo, fights an orthodox stance. She kind of sits down on her punches, kind of heavy on the punches, then heavy on the kicks. Kind of kind of stationary in a kind of way. You know, just kind of throw heavy shots. Um, she's physically strong though. And she usually fights at 115. So she's moving up to 125 for the... I don't think... Is this the first time on the 125? Uh, yep, this is the first time moving up to 125. So she never fought 125 before, but it's a short notice though. So again, anything can happen here. Virginia Jiu Jitsu black belt. Um, from what I've seen from her footages, uh, I mean, I mean she looks alright. Like I say, all all of these guys, you know, they're in here to fight, and if they're here, then they deserve to be there. You know, she 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 okay. You know what I'm saying? She. You know, she throw the hands and she look for takedowns. She will look for the sweeps she throws from the judo. And she look for submissions. And she's and she's heavy with the punches, right? Um, Manon Farrot, though, um, she's going to have a 6-inch of height. That's freaking massive. And a 4-inch of reach. Dude, Tabitha is, what, 5'1"? Five, 5'1". One? Five, one. And Manon is 5'7", right? Yeah, 6-inch. Yeah, man. That's massive. 
that's massive and a four inch of reach Whew. she's a southpaw and she has a karate muay thai kickboxing base right she's kind of like a um stephen thompson right she had that stephen thompson flow she throw that 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 lead yoke yoko gary from the side and then she set up from off the yoko gary right um she kind of flow with the techniques them her striking is solid she got nice karate base man um, and she's massive for this 125. She's massive, dude. She 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 gonna be the bigger person in this fight, as far as height and reach and body frame too. Um, throws the lead Yoko Gary the side kick to keep the distance in, then follow up with the Mwashi Gary, right? Which is the own house, and then she will go straight into Jordan Zuki, which is straight punches to the face. Okay, so she's very technical. I like I like Manon's flow. You know, I like the way she moves her karate. It's very in and out. Kind of like Stephen Thompson, right? Um, it's a short notice for Richie. So, again, she's moving up in weight. <sighs> Manon is going to be the bigger fighter here. And it's not like she doesn't have the skills. She's very technical. Her ground game, she has been working on it. Um, her takedown defense looks pretty good. But again, Richie is a British and Jiu-Jitsu black belt. So, if she can just push the takedown, push the takedown, happen to get it, you never know. She could pull off a submission anything's possible in this game but um for this one here man i'm gonna go with manon for the win i just feel like her flow you know her precision her timing um i mean her technique is this her striking technique is solid man it's solid it's solid her washes everything is non-telegraph and her combinations are on point and her power is upon her speed it's 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 like art you know, it's art. It's like Stephen Thompson, man. Or um, MVP, Michael Venom Page. Okay? So, I like Manon Ferret for the win. And I must say, Manon Ferret by KOTKO. All right? And um, this one I'm confident in. Confident, but not too confident. Because then, smaller cage, you got Virginia Jiu-Jitsu black belt you're dealing with. I mean, you never know. I mean, we see fights where, you know, you got good stand-up, you know, guys, and then all of a sudden, they just keep getting taken down, taken down, taken down, and they can't stop it, taken down, and then they get gassed out, and their hands get heavy, the feet get heavy, and they're getting taken down, and then they get submitted. It can happen, man, but I'm, I'm confident, but not too confident, so be careful with this one, too. And also, just short notice for Richie, so that's the next reason why I would say he's more confident. Okay, so, Farrat by KOTQ, guys, okay? Next fight here, we got Alan Patrick versus Mason Jones. All right, Alan Patrick here. Um, Alan Patrick, the next guy here, like I mentioned, you know, he's not active, man. It's not active, not active. Um, Bobby Green, 2020, lost that fight, hasn't fought 19, fought, one, fought two times 18, didn't fight 17. I mean, most of his, his wins are earlier, but he's not active. Um, and I feel like he's in a decline. I mean, because he's not active. If you're not, as I said, if you're not practicing, if you're not training consistently or playing the game or painting or whatever your art is, if you're not doing it consistently, there's guys out there who are going to gonna pass you. You know what I'm saying? Because they're just being active. Even though those guys may not be as good as you, but it's just that they put the work in on a consistent basis and they're in there competing. So it's just that cage experience. They get more cage experience, more cage experience. The more cage experience they get, the more time you're in there, the better you're going to be. The least time is like you're not, you're not fighting. You fight one time a year, you miss one more year, you miss two more years, you come back. You know, I mean, Dominic Cruz say that, you know, there's no such thing as rust, but some guys do get rusted though and some guys lose the edge they lose that mental remember if you're not in there and you're not competing if if you're a guy that used to knock people out and you haven't done that in two years when you get in there you may lose that edge you know what i'm saying um yeah. he's not too durable either mm. um he will also gas out in the fight his last Finishes was a bad submission in 2008. Last KOTK was in 2013. Um, he doesn't have a good gas tank, like I mentioned. So he's a guy to get tired. And 
for him to win this fight, man, he's going to need a finish. And he's going to need a finish in the first round. Either a KO TQ or a, or a submission. He's a BJJ black belt also. So this is the only way that Allen is going to win this fight. He's going to need a first round finish. Okay? Um, Mason Jones here. Um, he lost his debut against... Um, what's that dude's name? Uh, lost his debut against Mike Davis, right? And um, it was kind of, an, kind of an upset, even though I feel like Mike Davis was the favorite in this. I think he was. But, um, yeah, it was an upset because I guess people thought that Mason would have came in here and then, you know, because he's coming from um, Cage Warrior and he was a champion of Cage Warrior. Um, this is a guy that he will walk you down, man. He, I mean, he takes a lot of damage, though. That's one thing I don't really like too much. He takes too many damage, too much hits, but he keep coming forward. He takes some big shots and just keep walking you down, man. Um, so he has a pressure. He has a pressure on you, pressure on you, pressure on you. Pressure, 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 pressure. And that's why I said that um, with, with, with um, Alex, with Alan um, Patrick, he's going to need to either stop Jones, either submission or KOTQ because the pressure from Jones is going to be too much for Alan to handle, man that forward pressure right so we we see with patrick fights he doesn't really handle the pressure too well right and then he gets hurt and he's wobbly all the way he's wobbly in the entire fight he's like days in the entire fight you know like he can't stand up and then his punches are labor punches he punching and falling down he can't hold on to the submission he's like his endurance and and mason jones had has mad endurance and he's very durable <laughs> very durable like I said, I don't like how we take too much hits, though, because, like I said, your head not meant to get hit. The more you get hit like that, it's going to do damage to you later on in life. And and, and then also, it eventually, it's going to slow you down. So you may not be able to take those shots anymore, take those shots anymore like you used to, like a Chuck Liddell. You're not going to be able to take those shots like you used to. And, and then also, when you take those shots, you can just go down. You know what I'm saying? So, and also you do brain damage to yourself. <laughs> so yeah, your head not meant to get hit like that, man. So um, for for this one here, this is a confident one for me. I just feel like Patrick is going to need to finish in the first. And I really don't see Patrick doing that because he's just, he hasn't had a finish since 2008 and 2013. And he's not durable and he's not active. So I'm going to go with Jones for the win here. And I'm going to say Jones by KOTQ, guys. All right. Conf that's a confident one. Okay, next fight here, we got Francisco Trinaldo versus Muslim Shirakov. This is the next interesting one here. <sighs> Very interesting one. And this is the one where I would say be careful with it. Um, because Francisco Trinaldo, age is a number, but man, he's 42, but he still looks good in there, man. I mean, the guy got a heart. He keep pushing forward and he doesn't give up, man. You know, and, and, and he's uh, BJJ black belt, he's striking, he's still technical, he's still heavy with the punches then. His last fight here, he believe he knocked out Herbert with an overhand left. So his overhand punches then is his bread and butter there, man, right? So, Tr Trinaldo, BJJ black belt. Um, his last submission here was, I believe, his last submission was in 2013. I don't think it was in, yeah, it was in the UFC against Mike Rio, right? Um, but again, his last finish was recently in 2020. Um, technical striker has a kickboxing kind of vibe to him. Um, he missed weight his last fight, though, I believe. Um, yeah, so, I mean, first six of Trinaldo is, is a very technical guy, man. Very, ex very, very experienced guy. Very experienced guy. So this is a big fight for Muslim, even though... You know, Trinado is 42, but age is a number, and a man still looks, he still looks good, man. He still, he still can hang with the young guys, then, right? Muslim Shirakov, king of kung fu. This guy is very freaking technical, too. I mean, he's kicking game, he's countering, striking is on freaking point. He's quick. Every movement he throws is non telegraph man. It's like a kung fu movie I'm watching. Anytime I see him move, man, his spin kicks and everything is like so quick. I'm like, oh, man, this this, you know, this guy can probably can be in a movie. And he can choreograph a fighting scene with him, man. I mean, the guy is smooth and, and quick with the movement and the punches, man. Um, he's going to have the speed advantage, though. That's the thing that I'm looking at here. 
and his striking is going to be more accurate than than Trinaldo's own, right? He fights an orthodox stance, but he will switch up. Um, Trinaldo fights in a southpaw stance, right? But with Trinaldo, though, he has an overhand. You know that he has an overhand left. So if he if he throws that the hand and catches Muslim with it, you know it could be lights out. You know because we see Muslim sometimes can get a hurt with overhands. The last fighter with uh, Zakiski, you know he I believe he he hit him with a I think he hit him with an overhand. Like he stunned him a couple times in that fight. But that fight went to a split and Muslim pulled the win off. But again. <sighs> BJJ Black Belt from Chinalo. If Chinalo can pressure and put Muslim against the cage, smaller cage now, he could pull off a win here though. But, like I said, in any fights I'm breaking down, judges, <laughs> Chinalo has been, you know, ripped off in a couple of his fights already. He, is, he has been robbed. Alexander Hernandez, Chinalo win that fight straight out and they robbed him. So, remember, even though you have the technical guys in there, whatever. If it goes to judges, the judges will do whatever they want to. And sometimes it's good to know who is judging the fights too. <laughs> because depending on the judges, if they favor a particular guy to win, they're going to make that guy win if the fight's real close. Even if it's not even close. So in a fight like this, with Muslim Sherikov, if this fight goes to decision, you could see Muslim winning it, man. I, c I can tell that now. You won't see Trinaldo winning. So... This is a tricky one, guys, in speed and timing and everything like that. Um, I say Muslim, but Ronaldo can take the fight to the ground. Maybe maybe look for submission. Maybe just grind out a win. But again, if it goes to decision, you could see Muslim probably edging it. So I'll be very, very careful with this one. And I would say, I'm going to say Muslim Shurikov, but I'm not confident in it. And Ronaldo may can pull a win here. If he can finish him, probably. But I'm going to go Muslim, Shurikov, by decision and not confident. Next fight here, we have uh, Tonner Bozer versus Lear Latifi. Um, Tonner Bozer here, um, very light on the feet, has a karate base. His, his, foot, his footwork is decent, has a 4-inch reach over Latifi. Um, karate base and orthodox stance and will switch to southpaw. He's going to have the speed advantage here and the movement. Okay, Latifi here, um, solid wrestling base and he's heavy handed. Um, he moved up to heavyweight though, so this is going to be his second time fighting at heavyweight against Derek Lewis. He lost that fight, but it was a close fight. You know, he got some takedowns there and got some top control and everything like that. Um, Fighting an orthodox stance, but Latifi will fade as the fight goes on. Um, this is the next one you gotta be careful with too, because like I said, smaller cage. Um, with Leo Latifi, he gonna look for takedown. And smaller cage, if you can get Bozo to the ground, Bozo could pop back up. The movement from Bozo though is gonna be the um, is gonna be thin in this fight. It's gonna be a thin to to actually look at, because the, the movement could cause Latifi problem. Because sometimes Latifi kind of straightforward. Doesn't really move his feet as much, and if Tanner can lateral move and pop pop the jab, set up the techniques from the outside, it could give Latifi a problem. And the fact that Bowser is moving, it's gonna be a little harder for Latifi to take him down or to even hold on to him. But again, you're dealing with a smaller cage though, so not much room to move around. This is a tough one, guys, to, to choose here because again, Bowser is a legit heavyweight, and Latifi is just moving up, and there's a massive reach advantage, a four inch reach. Actually, my bad there, guys. Four inch of height, I should say. The reach is pretty much the same. Um, this one, be careful with this one too, guys, man. Um, I'm liking Bozo here for the lightness on his feet, the movement. Um, I mean, Latifi could pin him against a cage again and hold him down, kind of like what Trinaldo, you know, may probably do. But um, I'm going to go with Bozo. I'm going to say Bozo by KOTKO, but I'm not confident in this one. And this is a fight where Bozo should have the confidence, the mental, um, because against the Andrea Alaski, he wasn't confident in that fight. He had a little bit of, if you want to say nervousness, he was nervous in that fight. He, 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 he never let it go like he did in his other fights here. He never let his hands go. I think against Latifi, he may let it go. I think he'll be confident in that fight. 
So I'm going to go with Boza for the win there. All right, but be careful. I'm not confident. Next fight here, we got Montana De La Rosa versus Irene Lipsky. This is the next one too, guys. Not confident. This is a tough card. It's a tough card to deal with, man. Um, Rosa here, wrestling base, grappling. Most of her wins are just all by submissions. I believe she got eight by submissions, right? She has no KO finishes. She's a grinder. Her striking is still in the works. Um, but she has a heart, though, and she will keep coming, man. She would... She takes a lot of damage though, man. She takes a whole lot of hits, a whole lot of knees, broken nose. I mean, she has to work more on her defense. Defense, stand-up defense needs it needs more work. She needs to take her head off center line and move her feet a little bit more. Um, it's a striking, it still needs work, but her strong point is her ground game, man. But like I said, she has heart and she'll keep pushing forward. Um, with Lipsky here, um, Lipsky has a striking base, right? But she can get control though, and she can get control on the cage, and that's where Rosa shines. If Rosa put her against a cage, Rosa will control her. Like every fight I see Lipsky in, once you put her against a cage, she can get control. In in the clinch, she's not that great when you put her in the clinch. She just stuck on the cage, right? Um, she also breaks under pressure, so her confidence. As the fight goes on, if she's not doing if she's not if she's not doing too well, then she will break under pressure. Um, she needs to stop Rosa to win this fight, so she may need to either submit Rosa or kill TQ, because the, the longer the fight goes, it's gonna favor Rosa, because Lipsky fades as the fight goes on. Right? It's a tough one here, man, because again, the mental of Lipsky is not there, and Rosa has the mental, and like I said, ninety percent is all mental. The ten percent is just the training. Right? If you, if you if your mind ain't there, then the physical is not gonna work. So I'ma go for Rosa here, but like I said, if 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 Lipsky throw a shot, a body shot, and and then hurt Rosa, it's possible. Right? It's possible she can go down. I believe she been stopped one time. Or even submit her. I mean, it's possible too. I mean, anything's possible in this game, man. There's nothing guaranteed. <laughs> I can tell you that. No, nothing is guaranteed, man. Especially if it goes to judges. <laughs> it's going to be in the judge's hand, man. <laughs> Lipsky lost two by KO. I believe De La Rosa lost one, I believe. Yeah. And she lost one by submission too. So Lipsky has an option of submitting her or... KOTQ is it's very possible. Um, just what I've seen from Lipsky is just she, she, she breaks under pressure, man. The, the, her, her confidence, mental is not there. And, and Rosa has that mental edge. So I'm going to go with Rosa for the win here. And I'm not confident in this at all. I'll be very, very careful because it can go either way, to be honest with you. And I'm going to say Rosa by decision, guys. Okay? Maquan American versus Camula Kirk. Um, uh, American here, strong wrestling, ground base here. We look for the submissions. Both guys have similar kind of striking. It's um, Kirk may have a little bit more better striking, but it's kind of like straightforward, kind of plant, um, kind of overhand, may throw some leg kicks here and there. But they look for the takedowns. Um, I believe Kirk is a BJJ black belt. Um, but American has more experience in the UFC, though. He has, he has fought more tougher competition, right? Um, American is slick on the ground, too. He's very slick. His submission, scrambling, his wrestling is very slick on the ground. If he, if he gets there, he will, he will lock up a submission on you, right? This is a short notice for Kirk, though. Very short notice for Kirk. BJJ Black Belt will switch his stance. Um, we'll look for the submissions too. Um, he was on a contender series, I believe, 219, and he lost to Billy Quarantino, if you guys remember that fight there. Right? He gassed out in that fight and he got knocked out, right? I believe it was a TKO. He got stopped. Uh, technical uh, referee stepped in there because he was he just taking a lot of damage, right? Um, Short notice fights. I mean, American should win this fight. I mean, he's more experienced guy here. He he has the tools. He came off a tough fight with Etsy Barboza. If you fight Etsy Barboza and you go to decision, 
you know, your level of skill level is just going to go up. That's the thing. Taking a loss, especially if it was lost by a decision, it should make you better, you know, because Edson put a beating on him and, and then he hand in there. So Kirk hasn't faced anybody like Barboza before. So it should make Murkan a little better in this fight against Kirk and there's a short notice. So I'm going to push her towards Americani for the win here and I'm going to say Americani by, by submission. And I'm kind of confident in this one, guys. I think Americani should get a win on this one, okay? So a confident pick for me on this one, all right? Next fight here, Tom Breeze versus Antonio Arroyo. Uh, Tom Breeze, man, um, both guys will gas out. I mean, that, that's, that's for definitely sure. Um, Breeze here, though, man, he deal with a lot of anxiety, a lot of mental issues. Like, you know, like when he goes into the fight, he's like, sometimes he may be on, and sometimes he may be off. You just don't know which Breeze is going to come out. And he can be broken easily. So if you hit him a couple of times in the first round and he gets hurt, most likely he may lose that fight, right? I mean, that's what I'm seeing in all this fight. BJJ black belts, decent striking though, decent boxer, right? But if he's on you and he's on and he's tagging you up, then, then his confidence will go up. But if you, you know, hit him with something or or you take him down, he can get broken. And that's the, that's the thing about this fight. This, this, this uh, next one here where it's like, I told you this entire card is, is very tough to predict and break down. So, you know, Breeze is the mental is not there. 90% is mental, man. If your mental breaks, your physical will go. Yeah. Um, Aurora here is um, Karate Bay is a technical striker too. He can get taken down back to back and grind it out. Like we saw from his fighter against Darren Wynn. Darren Wynn was just taking him down, taking him down and grinding him out. And then after a while, once he hit the second round, he gets really, he gets really gassed out. And it's like he just falls to his back. So, <laughs> this is a fight to him. It's like a Christian Mark fight, man, to be honest with you. But, I mean, Breeze has a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. You know, he can look for takedowns. So, he should be able to kind of edge out the win here. Both of them are pretty much on the same height level. I don't know if that's going to make a difference, but... Um, I mean, at least for Breeze, uh, but I'm gonna say Breeze for the, I'm gonna say Breeze for the win, man. But definitely, I ain't confident in this one. Not confident, and be very careful. And I must say Breeze by submission, man. All right. Next fight here we have Dosko Todorik Todovic. <laughs> Forgive me if I mispronounce that. Versus Gregory Rodriguez. Dusko, um, he got caught in his last fight there. A couple times he got caught. He got and he got knocked down. But um, you know, the referee kind of, you know, kind of saved saved him from taking too much damage. You know what I mean? Because he got knocked down must be like three three times, and then the last time he got knocked down, you know, the referee just went in there and stopped it, which was Herb Dean, I believe. So, I mean, it's good to, you know, when you see these guys getting knocked down consistently, it's good to stop the fight, man. Because, uh, I mean, a young guy like this, you know, you could, you, you, you could save him, you know, so he, if you want to keep fighting. But if he takes damage like that and then mess up his head, you know, maybe next fight he may not be the same. So it's, it's good to kind of stop them from taking so much damage. Whenever you see the fight is ending up like that, just keep getting knocked down consistently. Um, that's because very light on his feet. Has a karate base there, in and out movement, BJJ black belt. Um, a lot of head movement from him faints. He kind of ride his chin kind of high, but, <laughs> he, you know, he, 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 I mean, he moves his head out of the way and he slips, right? But then in the fight against um, Sonorano, I mean, so, Sonor, Sonorano caught him though, man, because he timed him. Because he sees his head keep going back, so he just moved in a little bit more. He just inched in a little bit more and just caught that, and, and, and then he caught the chin. So, it's just one of those fights where, man, it, it's... Uh, I mean, it's a tough one, but um, to me, I feel Dusko is a, is a pretty good fighter. He's a very well-rounded guy, right? Um, it's a short notice fight here for Gregory Rodriguez, right? Um, fighting an orthodox stance. He's very heavy-handed, BJJ black belt also. He's coming off a loss in the contender series, if you guys remember, against Jordan Williams. He lost, he lost by punches, right? Um... I mean Rodriguez is I mean he's not a he's not a bad fighter, he's pretty well rounded. Um he will walk you down kinda heavy on the stance, but he throws heavy, right? But does go more light on the feet and pop he pop the jab, move in and out. 
cage is going to be smaller. So if Rodriguez can close the distance, he may can clip Dusko like what happened in the last fight. But I believe Dusko should, you know, make some adjustments for this fight. I just feel like Dusko, in my opinion, is just a more seasoned guy here. So I'm going to go with Dusko for the win. And I'm going to say Dusko by KO, TKO. I'm not too confident in this one because, like I said, even though it's a short notice, I mean, Rod Rodriguez has the heavy hands. And if he can, <laughs> if he catches Dusko on the chin, you know, it could be, you know, a, a repeat of his last fight. So, I mean, let's see what happened here. But I like Dusko by KO, TKO. Okay. Next fight here, we got Santiago Ponzinobo versus Miguel Biza. Uh, Bizi. So hopefully I pronounced that right. <laughs> okay, Ponzinobo here. Um, he, he had some medical issues from back in the days. Um, hasn't been too healthy, been in, been in and out, and obviously not active. This next guy that's not too active either. Lost, lost to Jingling. He got knocked out in that fight. Um, he didn't fight 19, didn't fight 20, fought one time 18, fought a couple of times in 17. That is when he was more active. After 17, he just hasn't been active. And he came back in 2020, actually 2021, and he got and he got knocked out. So it's 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 hard to it's hard to see or hard to tell where Ponzi Noble mental state is after of that loss. Even though it's Linga Jing. Or Jing Ling, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and Jing Ling is a tough guy to come back to and fight. You know, Jing Ling is a heavy hand striker, so he only take one shot. But um, with with Ponzi Noble, he fights an orthodox stance. Um, mentally, as I said, we're not sure where his head is. You know, after his last fight against Jing Ling, I mean, he hasn't fought in a long time, and he came back and get knocked out like that. You just you don't know what to expect. When he comes in and fight Miguel, you don't know what Ponce is going to come in. He's going to come in and, and fight like he usually fight against Neil Neil Magny or Gunnar Nelson. You know he's coming off of injuries, some medical issues. You just you just don't know what to expect. So this is a next one where he's careful. This is a tough one to pick. And against Miguel, Miguel is an active guy. He's been active, but the only difference is that he's not too experienced like Ponce Noble. He doesn't have the experience, right? He hasn't fought the, ex the guys what Ponson was fought, I should say, okay? But he's well-rounded, and he's a BJJ black belt, um, an orthodox stance, and he looks sharp. You know, his jab looks sharp, his movement looks sharp, his kicks, his strikes look sharp. At times, he can he can get hit, though, which, I mean, any, anybody can get a hit, but at times, he can be open. But then he will, he will recover, and then he will make adjustments and come back in the fight. But this is the next tough one to pick because you just don't know where Ponzi Noble head is at. You don't know where mentally he's at. And from that knockout against Jingling, he's like, what Ponzi Noble is going to come into this fight? You know, he's, he's, he's kind of inactive. Um, this one's a toss-up too, guys. This one I'll be very careful with because I do believe that Miguel can pull the fight off. I do believe Ponzi Noble can win too because just of experience. And Miguel hasn't faced any fighter like Ponzi Noble, like at that caliber. I mean, Matt Brown, yeah, but Matt Brown, you know, he's kind of faded, right? Um, Soto, yeah, maybe, but I mean, Ponzi Noble is on a different level, though. But again, he's inactive, coming off of injuries, you just don't know. And like also coming off a of knockout. Um, I'm going to go Miguel Bizet here, but. And again, I'm not sure about this one. And again, Ponzi Noble definitely can win this fight just based off experience, man. The strictly experience, Ponzi Noble can win this fight. But I'm going to go Miguel Bize for the win. And I'm going to say Miguel by... I'm going to say Miguel by KOTQ, man. All right? Next fight here. We have Roman Dalzed versus Lerano Starpoli. This is a majorly tough one, too. Because we're dealing with um, Roman here, which Roman going to look for takedowns. And his grinding, his cage control, putting it to the ground is not too bad. Right? He is going to have a 5 inch reach. So Paul will switch his stance. He will look for takedowns, but he will gas out as the fight goes on. He also has heavy punches too. Right? Star Poli here. Um, striking base. Um, very light on the feet. In and out movement. He picks his shots. 
Um, his technique is not bad. He got good striking techniques, right? Orthodox stance, she will switch his stance, right? I feel that Stopoli is going to have a speed advantage during this fight. And that's the one thing I'm looking at, the speed advantage. And also the movement. Because when it comes to Roman, Roman will come straight forward at you. He will switch his stance and just look for takedown. But Stopoli is lateral movement, circular movement. A lot of spinning techniques, spinning back feet, spinning elbows, spinning back kicks, spinning heel kicks, and so forth. But... Again, if Roman get a hold of him, pin him against a cage, take him down and look for that knee bar or heel hook, he could pull off a submission on Star Poli. So this is the next one where I'm not not confident with this one either, man. Yeah, majority of these fights, I'm not confident because the, the, the matchups are just so it's just so close and a lot of inactivity. A lot of guys come up for losses. It's just it's just hard to tell. It's hard to tell, man. So. I'm going to go with Star Poli based on the movement. And his take on defense has been getting better. So if he can keep Roman off of him, which may be kind of tough, but he can lateral circle off the cage and, and keep him in the center, he may can get a win here, man. If he's, un, if he's unable to do that and just get pinned against the cage, then he's going to be in problem. But I'm going to go with Star Poli by decision. And I'm not confident, guys. Okay? Next fight here, we have Walt Harris versus Marcin Tuboro. Man, they don't play around with these matchups, man. Oh my goodness. This, this is, I don't think I've ever brought on a card like this where like the fights are just so, so close. A lot of the guys are, are coming off of losses. Like majority of this card, the guys are coming off losses, man. That's makes it very, very hard to predict. Um, Walt Harris here is a heavy hitter, so poor. He can get taken down and he can get submitted and he will gas out in the fight, but he's a heavy freaking hitter and he's quick. He's quick at the movement, quick with the speed for a big, for a big <laughs> 6'5", 250 pound, 250 pound pound guy. He moves freaking quick and he, and he hits hard, man. He, I mean, he look like he got power in there, right? Um, against Tabora though, Tabora, he's going to be the more well-rounded guy here and Tabora can look for takedowns and he can look for submission because the submission game I believe the submission game may be his strong point and for this fight hopefully submission game is his strong point because you don't want to go toe to toe with Harris because Harris is going to be the quicker guy in my opinion and he only take one shot he got six by submission he got eight, he got eight by KO so kind of slightly kind of even there but he's been knocked off for a time though you know what I'm saying? Wall Harris has been knocked out, I think, just about the same. So, you know, the the matchups on these cards are, they did a good job of matching up the guys on this card because the guys are very even in matchup, which makes it very hard. Um, <laughs> we see Tubora when he fought um, Greg Hardy. You know, he got him real tired, then took him down and finished him. I believe Wall Harris is more experienced than Greg Hardy, though. And, and Wall Harris in my opinion he hits harder than Greg Hardy right he is, is, is striking is more technical right he has more experience than Greg Hardy so this a fight where it's a toss-up you got two heavyweight guys here you know you take one shot and and it's over you know if Marcin Tubor can get Walt Harris to the ground though then the fight be over too because Walt Harris doesn't do well on the ground at all and when he gets taken down he's flat on his back first round he may get up but eventually the consistent takedown he's gonna stay flat um it's a toss-up man and it has to be a toss-up two heavyweights he just takes one shot man i mean wild tower is going there blitz across boom and marcin tabor just falls down that's it or um wild tower is going there and rush across throw some shots bam 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 and then marcin tabor kind of def defend like what he did to greg greg hardy defend defend and eventually get a takedown and get a submission anything is possible it's a smaller cage too it's less room to work. Um, I must say to bore for the win, and I'm definitely not confident. And I must say to bore by submission, guys. Okay. Main fact on the card here, we got Jorunzo Rosenstruck. I know I'm probably pronounced that wrong. Versus Augusto Sakai. Um, it's the next tough one here too, man. I mean, in Rosenstruck, he's a freaking heavy hitter right but depends on who is fighting he kind of 
he doesn't do much you know like against gain here you know when you fought gain you know he throws some punches here and there but he didn't really push the fight he wasn't really fighting in the fight right he was kind of like on the outside didn't want to move in too much i guess nerves probably maybe didn't want to get knocked out by gain you know by that reach advantage i mean it's possible you know so it's a fight where is he going to do the same thing when it comes to augusto is he going to just sit there and wait because if he does that you know with sakai that could be a problem because sakai could piece him up from the outside right um or sakai could even look for takedowns um i believe that sakai is, is the more well-rounded guy here but sakai is a more slower guy though Roger Strzok can be the quicker fighter here. He can blitz across very, very quickly with his punches, right? Um, next thing to a note is that Sakai, he can't go five rounds. He only been five rounds one time, and he couldn't complete, and he lost the fight against Alistair Overham. On paper, Roger Strzok supposed to win this fight just by looking at the fights that um, Sakai has fought. You know, a lot of split decisions... You know, he beat um, Marcin Tabora by an awkward first round. Um, Andre Olaski, you know, if you go by the MMA math, but again, you know, sometimes it doesn't happen that way, right? If Rosen Short doesn't go in there and then perform or do anything really, Sakai could pull off a decision on him. So this is a very, very, it's a tough one. It's, you know, it's both big guys here and anything is possible, both heavy hitters. Rosen Short can go five rounds and he's been going five rounds because um if you notice here his last fight was a five rounder so his last fight was against um gain five 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 rounder he went to decision in that one um francis nagano not francis nagano um alison over was a five yeah next five five round and he finished alison over in real real in the last couple of seconds he won that fight if he didn't get that knockout in that last couple of seconds um, Roger Strzok would have lost that fight that one punch he delivered is what won him the fight if, if, if you talk about right at the bell basically right so if he if he goes in there and just like don't, it's not, and he's not too active Sakai may can pull off the win but again Sakai may can guess but if, if there's no pressure on Sakai then Sakai could you know he could more um, conserve his energy as the fight goes on. The only reason why Sakai gassed because Overham put that pressure on him. I, I, I listen, Overham was pressure, 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 pressure. If Roger Strzok going there and pressure, 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 then we could see a, um, we, we could probably see Roger Strzok winning that fight. So it's a tough one for me to pick. I was kind of going towards Sakai, but then five round of fight, the speed advantage, and then just on paper. I would have to go with Rojan Stroker by KO TKO. Both big guys, not confident. Be very careful with this one. But I must say Rojan Stroke by KO TKO, guys. All right? So that's my predictions and breakdown, guys. First time coming back. Um, yeah, man, it's a, it's a tough one to come back to, to be honest with you, man. I mean, I, I really want to see how I actually do on this card because, I mean, it, it, this is probably maybe one of the toughest cards I've ever breakdown in a long time. Which I haven't been breaking on any cards, so <laughs> so let's see what happened with this one, man. Let's take a quick look at the odds here. The reason why I'm taking a look at the odds, guys, to see if the guys are too far ahead on odds. So that could be a, a sign to also look at. Um, Jordan Levet, 200. Um, okay, I can see. Yeah, I can I can see him being 200. I mean, I don't disagree with that. Like like I said, I have Jordan Dirty Dancing Levet. <laughs> As my confident one, so him at 200 is not a big team, right? Muslim Shurinov, Trinaldo, um, Shurinov is 245. I'll be careful with that one, like I mentioned. Trinaldo, more experience, has a grown game, smaller cage. And Trinaldo, even though it's 42, slower guy, but he tends to pull off the wins, man. And if he can get a finish or a knockdown or a submission, anything is possible. If he goes to judges, though, look for Muslim Shurinov to win. So, I don't disagree. I mean, I disagree with the odds on this one. I don't, I don't think it should have been so high for Muslim. This fight should probably be an even fight, to be honest with you. Manan Rort, man, negative 525. I mean, 
it's a short notice for Richie, so I can see why. And if you look at Manon, Manon is a is pretty good striker. She's um, very technical on the foot. Richie got the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, so anything is possible. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be careful with this one, man. Even though I'm confident in Farrah to win, but I will, I will be careful because this is our second fight, and she's at negative five twenty-five. That's that's kind of even though Richie, you know, is short notice, but she's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt, and it's a smaller cage. Anything is possible, man. So be, be very careful with this one. Woodson, uh, 175. Zalal, plus 155. I'll be careful with this one, too. I think this is more of an even fight. Woodson shouldn't be so high. <sighs> he shouldn't be so high, man. So definitely be careful with this one, because Zalal could pull off the win here, man. Mason Jones, Alan Patrick. I like Mason Jones. I don't see nothing wrong with the odds in that one. Um, American Kirk, I like American for that one. Um, Tanner Bozer, 185. Latifi, um, I think Bozer is too high for this one. This is an even fight, so be careful with this one, man. I do believe Latifi, if he able to can grind, put against a cage, and pressure, takedown, then he can win the fight. So be very careful with this one. Bozer, 185. The odds are too high on this one. This should be an even fight. Wow, De La Rosa, 265. Oh, man. Yikes. Yeah. Even though Lipsky, like I said, the mental. She don't have the mental. And Rosa got the mental and the heart. But still, at 265, I, I kind of disagree with that, man. This fight should be an even fight. Just the fact that Rosa is striking is, is not at a level of Lipsky. And if Lipsky can keep that distance and outstrike her and avoid getting taken down, she can win the fight. You know, Rosa, Rosa struggle against... Roger struggle with the striker. I and mean, when it comes to strikers, she struggle with them. And if she is unable to take them down, then she lose a fight. So she at 265 is that's way too high, man. Be very freaking careful with this one. Okay. Tom Breeze, Aurora. <laughs> Definitely be careful with this one, man. This is an even fight. Like I said, the mental. It's it's not there. Even though Aurora can get taken down and lay in his back. But then if Aurora land a couple body kicks and punches, you never know how Breeze is gonna take it. So this is an even fight too. The odds and the odds are off in this. Gregory Rodriguez, Dosko, 130. Yeah, I kind of like Dosko for that one. Kind of an even kind of, you know what I mean? Because Gregory could catch him with a punch, maybe. It's possible. You know, I said, but, 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 but Dosko is, is, is sharp. You know, his, his movement and technique, striking is pretty sharp. So he, he should learn from his last fight. So at 130, you know, that is not too bad. Uh, Roman and Lorenzo Stopoli. Um, Roman is favorite here, 145. Um, actually, I don't see nothing wrong with this one. Like I said, I like Stopoli, but um, uh, with Roman here, if you can get the takedowns and put him like as a cage and grind, 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 that's an easy win for him. It's a smaller cage. So Roman possibly could pull this fight off, man. But I, I think Stopoli with the movement. And, and the footwork he should maybe we can keep him on the outside but let's see what happened man like I said it's a smaller cage but I, I don't really see nothing wrong with the odds in this one alright um, Miguel and Santiago that's about right I would say it's an even fight just from what Santiago been showing and not active and what Miguel been showing it's an even fight Martin Taboro Walt Harris wow uh I disagree with the odds in this one. This is an even fight. And the reason why I'm saying that because Walt Harris is a heavy hitter. And Martin Tuberro being knocked out in first rounds. If Walt Harris comes in there and catches him with a punch, with a good shot, uppercut, or a straight, straight shot in the pocket, we can see Tuberro going down. Alright, so it's a risky one and it's an even one. So the odds in here is off. Going for Walt Harris wouldn't be a, a bad thing. Um... Going for Aurora wouldn't be a bad thing. Going for a Lipsky wouldn't be a bad thing. I'm saying the odds is kind of it's down. The odds are off. Um, going for Latifi wouldn't be a bad thing. It's like I'm saying this. The card here is is tough card to pick. There's a lot of even fights, so the odds them shouldn't look like this, from my opinion, right? Um, Sakai and Rosenstruck. Okay, 
it's close to even okay i can agree with this one you know i mean if roja truck going there and doesn't perform he doesn't push the fight and sakai just doing his fight staying on the outside not getting too pressured in the fight he can land his shots maybe go for takedown then you can see him pull off a win you know what i'm saying it's possible i believe sakai i want to say sakai is a taller guy here i think they're probably pretty much even on height and reach i think 63 i think Roger Struck has an 80 inch reach i think or something like that a 78 or oh, 78 so yeah so um i disagree well i know i i agree with the sakai and erosion Struck. that's pretty much even the the odds that i disagree with is martin tabora wald harris um aurora and breeze lipskin rosa latifi and bozer um woodson and zalal and farad and richie but even there's a short notice but again he's dealing with a brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and manon Rorat is more of a stand-up striker you know what i'm saying so the cage is smaller um Chinaldo and muslim showing off i disagree with that too so those are the fact that i disagree with i'm gonna leave the fights down below i'm gonna leave a more confident my least confident and um yeah man i'm trying to get to a hundred likes on this particular card guys and all my cards that i put out so if you guys can just give me some thumbs up man try to hit me up to a hundred just to start out with i know you know it's a new channel trying to build myself back up but giving me like a hundred likes would be great you know if i missed anything you guys can leave it on below like if i you know i missed like a fighter stats or something or missed out something important you guys can leave it down below so other people can see it so you can help them out too right it depending on what they're doing with the pics i might start up a patreon account soon where i might drop maybe like um the way in predictions and face off i might just drop it over there you know like a last minute thing like last minute information i might just drop on my patreon account where you guys can go over there and check it out right so i may probably try to work on that by next week or so so thank you for the support guys thank you for all the love you guys have been giving me um enough love out to everybody and um, i'm gonna keep pushing these cards out and this card is kind of late my first one is kind of late but i'm gonna try to get the cards out by no later than wednesday you know but this is a very tough card so you guys leave the comments below and give me some likes man i need at least a hundred if i get 200 that'd be great man and share this video with everybody all right you guys keep on kicking one love out to everybody and oh